Welcome to Geopolitical Rise Zone. Today I want to share a few thoughts and perspectives on what I think has been a fateful error in NATO's exit strategy from Afghanistan. So now NATO is pulling out its forces from Afghanistan and ending a 20-year military mission. Towards the end of 2014, NATO's Operation Enduring Freedom ended, and in the beginning of 2015, NATO's Resolute Support Mission, which entailed you know, supporting, advising, and training Afghan security forces, started. And that's continuing now and going to continue until 2024. That means NATO's exit strategy in many ways lasts about 10 years. But now, as NATO's ending its operation in Afghanistan, there are some important questions that need to be raised. Number one, what has NATO really achieved in Afghanistan? Number two, has NATO been able to build a strategic foundation and a strategic presence for itself to have strategic relevance in Afghanistan's future and in Afghanistan's economic future? And I think that the answer is no. So the question is, what could NATO have done differently as part of its exit strategy to become a part of Afghanistan's future and to be relevant in Afghanistan in the future? Well, I think if NATO had planned as part of its exit strategy to develop a master plan for infrastructure development, economic development, and energy development across Afghanistan, then NATO would have made itself irrelevant and really achieved something in Afghanistan. And NATO would then, you know, with a larger presence, potentially, or in a different way, in a transformed manner, been a part of Afghanistan's future and NATO would have gained strategic relevance and strategic presence in Afghanistan. Now the reality, NATO is pulling out its forces, leaving its military bases, and this is about it. While the security forces will remain in, you know, in, in, in collaboration and training with NATO forces, that's going to continue until 2024. But in reality, in terms of you know, Afghanistan's economic future and in Afghanistan's you know, infrastructure future, NATO is not going to be a part of that. Now, Recently, last year, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan agreed to develop a railway corridor from Tashkent, the capital in Uzbekistan, across Uzbekistan to Masri Sharif in North Afghanistan, via Kabul to Peshawar in Pakistan. That's going to connect into China's, you know, China-Pakistan economic corridor, reaching all the way down to Qadar by the coastline of the Indian Ocean. Now, what is really interesting is that, you know, Russian Railways Chief Oleg Belosrov, he signed an agreement in Tashkent on May 19. So Russian Railways is going to be designing this railway, you know, stretching from Uzbekistan across Afghanistan to Pakistan. This is really unique. You know, I mean, Russia is considered an adversary by NATO. And therefore, of course, you know, Russia is not a part of NATO's mission uh, in Afghanistan in any way. But I mean, NATO has now been present in Afghanistan for 20 years, uh, but, but Russia and Russian railways is gaining this unique contract to build a railway corridor you know, across Afghanistan. And that is, I think, absolutely interesting and very, very fascinating because that shows Russia's ability to maintain contacts, to maintain strategic relevance in Afghanistan and in the neighboring countries. You know, if NATO had been able to plan differently its exit strategy, you know, partner with regional countries to understand the ramifications and what is needed for Afghanistan, and that is infrastructure development to build railway corridors, energy projects, highways, special economic zones, logistics clusters. This is going to be growing now over the coming years and decades. What is interesting is NATO is not going to be part of that at all because NATO has not achieved the strategic relevance needed to really gain, you know, this position, which we now see one example of Russia Railways gaining in this railway contract to, that will be designed uh, of, of developing a railway corridor from Uzbekistan across Afghanistan and into Pakistan. I think this is really fascinating and just shows one example. We do know that earlier this year, China and Iran signed a strategic agreement, which I termed the China-Iran Economic Corridor in an analysis last year. I also made a video about it. And you know, the China-Iran Economic Corridor, I think will also be developing a railway corridor from China across Afghanistan into Iran. Now, I think you know, there will be various infrastructure corridors and infrastructure projects that I think will emerge in Afghanistan over the coming years. But interestingly enough, I don't, you know, NATO now with, with the situation, I don't think will be part of that. Um, now, you know, maybe some NATO countries will, you know, have separate contracts uh, developed to be a part of, you know, infrastructure projects. But in reality, you know, NATO's mission now is ending and NATO therefore is leaving Afghanistan. 
So in reality, NATO has not achieved the strategic presence and relevance and foundation that it could have if its exit strategy was framed differently. I thought this was important to raise because there's been a lot of analysis and articles about NATO, you know, pulling out of Afghanistan, but I haven't really heard or seen any analysis, you know, focusing on these issues that I think are important to reflect on. Because NATO's, you know, military mission in, in Afghanistan has been lasting for 20 years and, you know, almost up to $2 trillion or more has been spent. Um, but the question then again is, you know, what has NATO achieved and what was, you know, and what was a NATO able to do to achieve a presence to be a part of Afghanistan's future, and that unfortunately now seems to be very limited or close to zero. Well, again, thank you so much for joining, and I look forward to seeing you again on Geopolitical Rights, and please remember to subscribe. Thank you.